How are you feeling about the switch? I mean, <laughs> the switch. <laughs> now, just... we went through a very open process, <laughs> a very inclusive process. Uh, it was bottom up. I don't know if uh, you know that. Yes, that's what I've been told to say. Yes, it was, uh, uh, it was, uh, it was a blitz <laughs> primary, I believe, that's is what right. they called it. It's a very, very fast blitz. <laughs> yes. I think it was, it was a blink uh, primary, so we call that. Oh, yeah. a 30 minute uh, <laughs> convention. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, between a tweet and uh, another tweet. It's amazing yeah. how it happened. Yeah, it's yeah. been amazing. Oh, I'm sure he really does find it funny. He's not bothered by it at all. You just heard the bitter statements of a snake who unfortunately serves as the governor of California. Some like to refer to him as Gavin Newsom. I like to refer to him as a smarmy failure of a politician out of the state that I was born and raised in. Nonetheless, Gavin Newsom was fighting hard to be the guy who stepped in to replace Joe Biden if he dropped out of the race, of course. And now some are noticing Look, he's not really doing the type of campaigning for Kamala Harris that he was doing for Joe Biden. What's going on here? Now, of course, we all know what's going on. Newsom was engaging in that campaigning, not for Joe Biden's sake, but in order to increase his name recognition in case he found himself in a situation where he'd be tapped to replace Joe Biden after he drops out. Now, Newsom went from campaigning hard for Biden to barely campaigning at all on behalf of Kamala Harris, so much so that Democrats, Democratic operatives are now questioning whether his role as a national surrogate for Harris is really something they can lean on. They're questioning if it's even a thing. And so Politico has a great piece about this. They write that the chatter around Newsom was amplified by his subdued showing at the convention, meaning the Democratic National Convention. He was one of the few major statewide California officials not to speak from the DNC main stage. Hey, don't scroll away. Come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just want to urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting. You do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. And we were at the DNC, I noticed that. Uh, Michael Shore uh, from TYT, of course, interviewed him as uh, he passed by him and th they had a conversation. You can check that out. But it was noticeable that Gavin Newsom's presence in official events for the DNC um, was minimized. And so I didn't know if that was on purpose. I didn't know what was going on with that. I just took note and then kind of forgot about it. And then these pieces get published. And it was just incredible to see that others are noticing it. Then you have Gavin Newsom give that statement to the Pod Save America guys. And you look, you think Gavin Newsom would be worried about the lack of the democratic process to find Biden's replacement? If it were if it were Newsom, he wouldn't have any problem with the blitz primary. We all know that. Now, Newsom didn't seem to want to take part, possibly over his own frustration that he is not Biden's replacement. The Los Angeles Times reports that convention planners wanted him to kick off Monday night's primetime programming, but the governor begged off. Couldn't make it on time, he said. Children starting a new school year, he explained. Though it's not hard to imagine attending orientation and still making it to the United Center, that's where they had the DNC, which is less than a dozen miles from Chicago's Midway Airport. Is anyone really gonna buy that Gavin Newsom really turned down a prime time speaking role at the DNC because children in California were going back to school? Come on. Now, one Democratic strategist basically said that, you know, Kamala really doesn't need that smarmy SOB the way Biden did. And I love this comment. This is Paul Mitchell. He's a Sacramento based Democratic consultant. And he says that Newsom was a uniquely good surrogate for Biden. Kamala doesn't need the energy delivery as much right now. Mm. Mm, that's got to sting. It's got to sting just a little bit. Politico also notes that other top Harris surrogates include governors Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania and Andy Bashir of Kentucky, who, unlike Newsom, were both part of the Veep stakes. Ah, he wasn't even considered. Oh, he wasn't even considered. Okay, let me pause. Some of you who aren't familiar with my previous stories on Gavin Newsom are probably wondering like, geez, what does Anna have against Gavin Newsom? Well, I live in California, so I've seen his lack of leadership. I've seen how awful he has been as a governor. But putting that aside, you know, 
there's a very specific story that I'd like you to turn to after you watch the show, of course. I did a lengthy, in depth piece about how Gavin Newsom totally screwed over Californians who lost everything to the largest fire, wildfire in the state that wasn't caused by climate change, okay? Climate change exacerbated it. But what caused that wildfire in California in 2018 was PG&E, one of the utility companies here in the state. They couldn't be bothered to replace a $10 hook that was 100 years old. That hook held the electrical wires up. And when it you know, deteriorated to the point where the wires fell to the ground, well, that sparked, again, one of the worst wildfires in California's history in 2018. People in that town lost everything, and they still have not been made whole. Gavin Newsom turned around and bailed out PG&E. That's the kind of governor he is. So he likes to puff up his chest and pretend like he's a man of the people. He's not a man of the people. He has been an awful leader in the state. And I have a feeling that you know, Democrats on a national level see that failure. And that's probably the reason why he wasn't even considered as a uh, you know VP pick. All right, now with that said, uh, let's also go to Nathan Click, who is um, the spokesperson for Newsom. He basically says, you know, he is totally focused the next 70 odd days on electing VP Harris, defeating Trump once and for all, and going to the mat for her campaign, just as he did at the convention on Fox and elsewhere at the request of her campaign. Okay, so we'll see it. I mean, he's gonna headline uh, you know, a fundraiser for her. Apparently, it's not a problem. You know, he doesn't have any bad feelings. But look, again. In my opinion, the truth is that when he was campaigning on behalf of Biden, when he was going state to state, he wasn't really campaigning for Biden. He was campaigning for himself. Now, why do I believe that? Well, because when he was going state to state, he wasn't talking about Joe Biden's political vision. He was talking about his own political vision, what kind of leader he is. And by the way, if he had anything positive to say about his leadership, just take a look at how he's led California. I mean, he picked fights with red state governors to increase his name recognition. He even had a debate on Fox News with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis when Ron DeSantis was still running in the Republican primary. He also paid for political ads, not promoting Biden, promoting himself, even though he wasn't officially running for anything. And the LA Times notes that he ran TV ads and put up billboards promoting himself as a champion of abortion rights. Now, look, there's no chance that Kamala Harris is gonna drop out of the race. So why the hell would he use up his time and energy to go out there and do campaigning on behalf of Harris? And I say on behalf of Harris because again, his campaigning on behalf of Joe Biden wasn't really on behalf of Joe Biden, it was on behalf of himself. Finally, just an excerpt that I had to share with you all from the Los Angeles Times. Mark Barabak writes that people who know both of them, meaning Harris and Newsom, said Newsom was not distressed to watch Harris stumble through the early stages of her vice presidency. And they said Harris was not terribly displeased to see Newsom forced to fight an attempted recall, though she did come to California for a home stretch rally on his behalf. Remember, we're talking about two California politicians who sure have to work together. They're part of the same party and they're part, they were part of the same state. But we're talking about two individuals who are very competitive and are competing against one another for positions of power. And so while they do appear to be friends publicly, behind closed doors, they be sniping, okay? So I think that the smaller role that he has played in the campaigning for the presidential ticket is really indicative of what motivated him when he previously did the campaigning for Joe Biden. It wasn't for Joe Biden, it was all about Gavin Newsom. And if you look at his so-called leadership in California, everything he has done, hasn't been about the people of California. It's always been about Gavin Newsom. Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us, become a young Turk.